Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process of sewing a knit cardigan using my serger. I'll be using the conventional machine a little bit too, but for the most part, this is a super fast sew using the serger. I'm using my Tossy Draft It Yourself robe and jacket pattern, and I'm adhering pretty closely to the pattern design, except that I'm tapering the sleeves so that it's more narrow at the wrist and the cuff is a little bit tighter and won't flop around. So in the Tossy pattern, I give instructions for sewing with woven fabrics, which really is suitable for um, the robe and the jacket. And I give a few tips for using knit fabric, but I thought it would be helpful today to do the step-by-step -step process and show you just how fast it is to do this pattern on the serger. I'm using a sweater knit today to make this long cardigan, but you could use really any kind of fabric that you'd like to wear in a robe or cardigan. This is a robe that I sewed years ago using this same pattern, and it's from a rib knit, and it's super soft and comfy, and I really love wearing it. So just really, Use whatever fabric suits you and would suit a cardigan or robe style garment. So as I briefly mentioned, the Tossie is a draft it yourself pattern. And that means that the instruction booklet will show you how to draft all the different pattern pieces for these two designs so that it's a custom fit for your body and your personal preferences. I'm going to be sewing this a little bit out of order, but I'm doing it so that it's as efficient as possible. I'll also put notes in the show notes with timestamps so that you can skip ahead to different steps. Let's get started. So here I have my fabric pieces all prepped and ready to sew for our first round of sewing. The first thing you wanna do is match up the front and back pieces at the shoulder and I'm using my serger so I've pinned my pins going um, parallel to the stitching line for safety. We'll stitch this first and then I have the cuffs for my sleeves and I will be stitching those along this side to make a little loop that I'll fold over. Then I have my front band and this is the back neck seam for my front band. We also want to stitch the ends of our front band. So two of the short ends will create the center back seam and then the other two are going to be at the hem. So we just fold it with right sides together and I'll just put a pin to hold it and then we'll stitch right along the short end. Then I have my pockets and all I'm going to do with my pockets is finish the edge on all four sides. Over here I have my sleeve pieces and I'm just gonna leave those to the side for right now. All right, let's head over to the serger. Okay, here I am at my serger and I have this all set up. I've already adjusted the tension for my fabric and I'm ready to start sewing. I'm using a one half inch seam allowance. When you use this draft it yourself pattern, you get to decide what seam allowance you wanna use. I'm going to be sewing and trimming away the excess seam allowance. Okay, those two seams are done. Let's go do our, this is our neck band and this is the center back seam of the neck band. Just a quick little seam. Next I have my cuffs. So I'm not even gonna bother to cut this right now. I'm just gonna keep on stitching. <laughs> First round, we want to stitch the short end of our neck band. Okay. 
and we'll do that for each side. We also want to finish the edges of our pocket piece. For this step, I've turned off the knife on the serger and I'm just gonna stitch right along the edge. When I get to the corner, I wanna go about two stitches past the edge of the corner, lift the presser foot, and then gently tug the thread off of that little finger right there and then you can pull this and pivot your fabric in front of the needles. Just push it in right in front of the threads there and you can stitch right down. And that will create a really clean corner finish. You can see that here, it's a pretty clean corner. And you'll just repeat that for every corner. We have all those edges finished with nice, clean, sharp corners. Okay, I'm just cutting these apart. And now we can go over to our pressing station. Here I am at the pressing station and this is the bodice of our cardigan. This is the back and this is the front. And we're just going to gently press this seam towards the back and I have my uh, iron on kind of a low setting so that we don't burn anything. When you're using sweater knits like this, you need to be careful um, just because you might have some synthetic ingredients in it or synthetic fibers, so you have to be careful. So just do a little gentle press. Uh, we can set this to the side. Then here is one of our sleeve cuffs and we're going to turn it right side out and it's gonna make this little loop. You can see it'll go around the wrist. And then I just wanna line up my seams and line up all the raw edges. And once I get those all nice and lined up, I'm gonna gently press my folded edge. That's it, just a little press. It's time to stitch our sleeves onto the body. So I've done a different, I've done a tapered shape to my sleeves. This is just a variation that you can do. So instead of having a rectangle, I've just narrowed it down as it gets to the wrist. So we will take one sleeve piece. I just wanna mark the center point of this sleeve. This center point is going to line up with the shoulder seam. Here's a front and back piece. Line up our center point with this seam and pin it. And just put that down. I'll put in a couple pins. Okay, then I will repeat with the other sleeve and take this over to the sewing machine. Okay, now I'm going to stitch the sleeves to the body. To use my serger, I'm just gonna start right at the edge and then angle my way in to my seam allowance. All right, we've stitched our sleeves to the body. Now let's head back to the pressing station. So here I have my shoulder seam and the arm seam that we just stitched. And I'm just going to gently press this seam towards the sleeve. If you have waviness in your seam, often the steam will help it. So then we wanna fold it right sides together. And we're gonna pin this so we can stitch our underarm seam. So I will just put in a few pins. I'm just going to try to line up these seams and raw edges at this corner. You can trim away extra threads. And then I'm just going to pin all the way down the front and back, just lining up the raw edges and then repeat for the other side and I will meet you back at the sewing machine. Now we're going to stitch the underarm seam and this is gonna start at the wrist 
and go all the way down to the hem. Then you want to go ahead and stitch the other underarm side seam. Now I want to finish the bottom edge of my cardigan. I'm going to turn off the knife and just surge along that edge. Okay, then I'm just going to cut that thread. Now, before I move away from the serger, I'm going to attach my sleeve cuffs. The next few steps we need to use our conventional machine. So while I'm here at the serger, I want to get as much done as I can. So here's one of my cuffs and I have the raw edges and the seam allowance is over here. I'm just going to fold this in half. And then with a pin, I'm just marking the halfway point in this little circle. Then with my cardigan, I'm gonna trim this thread and I'll do the same thing. Just use a pin to mark the halfway point. All right, there's our little sleeve opening. I'm gonna pop my cuff inside the sleeve opening and I'm going to align these pins. Okay, those are lined up. I'm going to take one pin away and leave one pin to keep that lined up. And then I'm going to line up the seam allowances in my cuff to the seam allowance of the sleeve. Put a pin there too. And we want to be really careful when we stitch this not to stitch over the pins. So with my fingers, I'm just adjusting everything so I have all three raw edges lined up. With the knife on, I'm going to slide this under here and I'm going to be stitching. I have my loop up like this and I'll be stitching around to attach the cuff. Just slide it in, press your foot down and be really careful of those pins. Okay, there we go. Now you can tie this in a knot or just thread the loose thread or the tail end through these stitches using a needle. I'm gonna attach my other cuff and then get out my conventional sewing machine. Okay, here I am at my regular machine and I'm set up for a narrow zigzag stitch and I have my walking foot on. So I've folded the top edge of my pocket down. This is the depth of pocket measurement is how much I folded it down. And then I'm just gonna stitch right along here. This is right sides together. And to help stabilize, I'll put a little bit of tracing paper underneath. Okay, and then just gently tear the tracing paper away. And we'll do it for the other side of the pocket. Okay, and then we'll repeat for our second pocket and I'll meet you back at the pressing station. Here I have my pocket with these little ends of the pocket fold stitched and I'm just going to turn it right side out and kind of poke these corners out. And then we wanna fold in our edges and press them. So you can use a tool to help you do this or just eyeball it and press this fold. And it might be helpful to use a ruler just to make sure you have a nice um, evenly pressed pocket that's all squared up. Okay, so you'll do this for both pockets and then find the point on your cardigan where you want to attach your pocket and pin it in place. If you want, before you attach your pocket, you could also do a little bit of top stitching right here. Okay, now because I have my top stitching all set up here, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch my pocket onto the cardigan. To figure out the position of the pocket, I tried on the cardigan and then marked where I wanted it to be placed with pins. Then I measured down from the, uh, the seam under the arm to make sure I get it in the same place on both sides. So I'm going to use my twin needle and pull some really long threads and we will just start top stitching. 
Again, if you don't want to use a twin needle, you can use a zigzag stitch to attach your pocket. And if you need a little more stability than pins provide, you could use a wash away um, adhesive tape to hold your pocket onto the body of the cardigan. Okay, so because I'm using a twin needle, I can't just lift my presser foot and pivot. So I'm gonna hold my fabric really stable, lift the needle, and let's see, lift this presser foot a little bit, and then just really gently turn the cardigan, keeping it from moving as much as possible. And the great thing about this sweater knit is you just really can't see the stitches. So even if they're a little wonky, like no one will ever know. <laughs> Okay, I'm stitching right to the end, then I lift my needle and my presser foot, and I'm just gonna hold my fabric and pull it away, and then trim these threads kind of long. And what I do is I bring these threads to the wrong side and tie it in a knot, and that should keep your pocket and the stitching pretty secure. Now before we attach the front band, we're going to hem the bottom of our cardigan. And I'm gonna use this tool to make sure that I'm using the correct hem allowance. I've decided to use a one and a half inch hem allowance, so I'll just use this to fold up this edge that we just finished, one and a half inches. And I'm just gonna press that in place. Ooh. <laughs> I'll press that in place all the way around and hold it with some pins. I'm all set up to use my twin needle to top stitch the hem of my cardigan. So I'm just gonna slide a little bit of tissue paper, tracing paper underneath my fabric to help stabilize it and start stitching. <laughs> a little bit wavy if you press it with some steam that'll usually take any of the waviness out so we have our long front band here and this is what finishes the front edge of the cardigan and I'm going to turn it so it's right sides out and we're gonna press all along this band so that we have a fold right in the middle and you just want to line up those raw edges kind of push out this seam that we stitched and just go all the way down. Let's see, when you get to the middle, you might wanna just gently press this seam allowance to the side and a little bit of steam can often help. Some fabrics, if they have a lot of synthetic fibers, they might melt, so just remember to test a scrap and be careful. Okay, so now we're at this other end and we'll just turn it right side out, kind of push that seam so that we don't end up with a shorter band. And give it a press. So now I'm pinning my front band onto the, op the front opening of the cardigan. And down at the hem, I've just aligned the bottom of the front band with the bottom of the hem and pinned that together. Um, you really want those to line up. And then you just want to pin this really straight and flat all the way up. And then you match the seam in the band with the center back of the back of the cardigan. And you can just fold the back of the cardigan in half to find that center point. So the only tricky part about pinning this on, hi kitty, is that this part that angles in the front of the cardigan can sometimes get a little stretched out. So you could stay stitch it or you could just be a rebel like me and just kind of make sure um, that it doesn't stretch out too much. So I've cut the front band going lengthwise so it's not gonna stretch very much. And I will just measure this angle for the front of the cardigan 
and make sure that it's pinned to the correct amount of the front band and just ease in where necessary because what's stretched out on the bias of the front piece can be just um, shrunk back in and made to fit the front band. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pin this all the way around and then head over to the serger. Okay, this is our final step already, I know. Um, and we're just gonna serge this front band onto the body of the cardigan. Use the seam allowance of your choice that you use to draft the pattern and just try to get all the raw edges lined up. Let's see, the knife is on, so I'm gonna be stitching the seam and finishing all in one go. Be careful, please, 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 to not stitch over any pins. Okay, press her foot down. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to get started, but there we go. Okay, that's it. That was one very long seam. I didn't do the best job at keeping a steady seam allowance, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I will just take a needle and thread this tail through my needle and then thread it through my stitching here. And you'll wanna gently press the seam allowance away from the band. And if you feel like it, you could top stitch the fabric to the seam allowance. I'm gonna leave mine as it is. Um, and that's it, I hope that you enjoy your cardigan. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you love your cardigan as much as I love mine. I'm really looking forward to wearing it this winter and fall. If you don't have the Tossy pattern already, I will put a link down in the show notes. Make sure to let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. And if you haven't already, I would be so honored if you hit the little subscribe button down below and then hit the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Happy sewing! Oh,